Hey guys, so I uh, recently got a couple of Game Boys in the mail, and um, I was going through them, cleaning them up, and I was going to do most of this off camera, but then I saw this issue and I decided, hey, well, hell, this will make a good video, it'll be helpful, and uh, well, I've never done this before, so I can document it when I fuck it up. Uh, but anyway, I got this Game Boy uh, from J4U. Uh, if you've seen my unboxing video, which isn't public, so you probably haven't, uh, this wasn't the Midnight Blue Game Boy. This was the clear Game Boy Color. I just happened to have the Midnight Blue in the Midnight Blue casing because I was cleaning both up and, well, this is the one that's dry. Uh, but anyway, uh, first thing you might notice when you're looking at this is that, well, I'm missing half a Game Boy. But that's irrelevant. We'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, this Game Boy has two issues. Both of them are somewhat common, one more so than the other. And I've done the first one before on camera, but I'll do it again today, just, just you know, so I have a nice good video for this. But the first issue is that the power switch is somewhat unreliable. Of course, now that I'm filming, it works just fine. But, um, you know, you, you, you switch the Game Boy on, sometimes it doesn't come on, you have to switch it on and off a few times before it comes on. Uh, if you accidentally just touch it, it'll go off. That sort of thing. That's that's what this is having. And yeah, like I said, of course, because I'm filming it, it's working just fine. Uh, I do have a game in there, and I do have the volume all the way up. And those astute among you might have noticed that there's, well, there's no volume. Um, there are two reasons for that. First is that this speaker is bad. I can tell that just by looking at the speaker. There's like all this rust and corrosion in there. Uh, so the solution to that is, unfortunately, you need a new speaker. But you don't want to just replace the speaker because the speaker didn't go bad for no reason. We got to fix the issue that caused the speaker to go bad. And that is one of the big old capacitors on the back. Uh, if, you, if you futz with it, you might get a little bit of volume out of it on occasion. And if I put it super close to the camera... I don't know where this microphone is. Might be able to hear there. It, it is working, and the volume wheel does work. Uh, but in this case, I know it's the speaker because not only did I just see a post from Ben Ben on his Facebook like two weeks ago, uh, but you could see this speaker just looks, it looks gross. And generally with electronics, you follow the shit stain until you figure out what's wrong. Replace parts along the way. But first things first, we're going to clean up the power switch so that we can get some reliable testing. Then I'm going to replace these three capacitors here. I'll turn on my work light here. And as far as cleaning the power switch goes, it's really easy. But if you haven't done it before, I can see it being, I can see that it looks somewhat intimidating. Um, but what you want to do, I'm going to switch it on because I'm starting at the bottom here. I'm going to jam my tweezers in there just so I have a grip on it. Take my soldering iron, melt that joint on the side here and try and pry this up. Now I'm just trying to get the metal shielding, not the whole switch. And I used to do this with a knife, and that's probably the easier way to do it, but there's a, um, there we go. If you look at it, you know, when, when you've got it in hand, you can see that there's like a little latch under the plastic, and that's what holds it down, really. But once you've got one side, the other side is significantly easier. And do pay attention to the direction that this goes on, because unlike Game Boy Advance consoles, this is directional. Focus, you little shit. Okay. I don't think that's focused, but the uh, side with all the activity going on, that goes towards the CPU. The flat side goes towards the edge. Set that aside. Try not to lose it. And take your power switch here. So what we want to do, we want to kind of clean up, there's these two wipers on here. We want to clean up the carbon buildup on both of them, and then we kind of 
we want to bend them down, angle them, so that they uh, make, so that there's more pressure against the motherboard. But the biggest issue right here, we take a look at here, these are supposed to be nice golden, well, golden, yeah, they're, they're gold-plated copper, it should be nice and shiny, but instead it's covered in all this black uh, soot, basically. Um, and that gives you some reliability issues. You know, it doesn't always turn on when you turn it on, or vice versa, whatever. My preferred way to clean it up is to take one of these um, paper, these cardboard cotton swabs, and sorry, I keep bumping the camera, put a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on there, and just run it against the contacts. And it makes a god-awful noise, but it works pretty well. And if you look at the back of that thing now, or not, because, yeah, there we go. You can see how much junk is really built up there. And when that builds up, just snip the end off, get a little bit more isopropyl alcohol, and uh, keep going till it's nice and clean. Okay, so it's not perfect, but it's significantly better. That'll work. But we still got to clean up the other half. So I'm going to get some isopropyl alcohol on this side, on the actual cotton sw cotton part of the cotton swab. Do, do, do. And you got to be careful because these two little wipers here, they can come out of the plastic and they're really small and they're kind of a bitch to get in. Uh, so I'm using my tweezers to hold them in place, make sure that they don't move. Oops. Come on. And just flip that over, get the other side. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll see a lot of carbon buildup on these. You don't have to get all of it. You just have to get the part on the actual contactor. And I'm just gonna go over this one more time with this side, just to make sure. And these contacts I don't know if they, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know why they did it, but there's two parallel sets of contacts on the Game Boy Color. On all the other consoles, like, um, well, specifically on the Game Boy Advance consoles, there's just the one set of contacts instead of the two. And what I'm doing right now, I'm using my tweezers to hold the contacts down and then the edge of my blade to try and bend it up so instead of instead of being flat it's more of a V and uh, use the tweezers here I don't know how well you can see that but they're nice and nice and bent up in a V shape I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over drop it back in And on this part, I'm going to bend it down a little bit just so that it's also kind of pushing down in the center. There's no uh, functional reason for that, really. It's just to ensure that the switch doesn't move around and uh, give you some intermittent issues. Uh, but as far as reattaching the shielding goes... that side real quick and then on this side okay you should not need to add any solder I suppose you can if you want but it's not gonna 
Probably not going to make your life easier. Just clean up some of that extra flux, though. All right. So next, I'm going to go ahead and get this speaker out of here. Well, actually, before I go any further, I'm going to make sure I actually solved my issue and didn't make it worse. So my first issue was that the console didn't boot reliably, and the uh, LED kind of flickered a little bit. But now, it's looking a lot better. No more flickering. And as long as you put the switch all the way up, it seems to go on. My tweezers keep getting stuck because I'm hitting that bottom part. But still no sound, which is to be expected. So I haven't addressed that issue yet. Okay. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and remove this speaker. Because it's garbage. Alright. And so, that leads us to the capacitors here. So, I'm not 100% sure which one's which, which one specifically you need to replace, but it doesn't really matter too much because if one's bad, chances are pretty good they're all bad or at least about to go bad. Uh, these electrolytic capacitors, I'm, they're... I, the, the data sheets for them say that they last 10 years. Clearly, this is gone for like 20 years before being replaced. So, you know, once you get over 10 years, start thinking about replace. Start thinking about replacing them. And, uh, well, if they last longer than that, then you're good to go. But otherwise, anyway. So there's, of course, three different versions. We have a 100 microfarad 6.3 volt capacitor a 100 microfarad 4 volt capacitor. Uh, that first one was 6.3 by 5.4 millimeters. This one's 5 by 5.4 millimeters. And the last one is a 22 microfarad 16 volt capacitor, 4 by 5.4 millimeters. Um, the voltage does not matter too much. Uh, you want to make sure that you go over, not under, and as close as possible. Um, but the capacitance, the UF, you want to make sure you get that the same. Uh, and as far as desoldering these goes, well, I don't know the best way to do that. This is my first time. I'm going to add a little bit more solder to the contact here. Do both sides. And then, hopefully, I can lift a side. That lift in the pad, too. If you have a hot air gun or a hot air rework station, this is definitely definitely going to be a good use for that. I'm going to try the uh, the dumb way and just use two soldering irons. But while the other one's heating up, I'm going to add some more solder to the rest of these joints. Last one, it's kind of a bitch to get to. Okay. And you probably don't want to desolder all of these simultaneously. I can't imagine you'll have a good time. Well, I mean, I suppose you can. It's just easier to keep track of what goes where, since they're all different. Okay, there we go. Delicious, delicious flux. There we go. 
Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. These things have super long pads underneath the capacitor. So you gotta, gotta get a lot of heat in there before it'll start behaving for you. Okay. Sorry for reaching in front of the camera. Just grabbing a fresh cotton swab. Clean this up. And you can leave all this other stuff down here. Um, of course, I say that and I'm cleaning it up. I just, I, I can't help it. I got the uh, cotton swab right here. Okay. All right. What was that? That was 100 microfarad. I don't know. Yeah, that little one in the corner is the 22. That one's also 100. This one's also 100. Uh, I'm guessing this 6S means 6 volts because this one has a 4S. So, we want this one. Yeah. So, we want the 6.3 volt 100 microfarad cap. And um, I ordered these parts individually from arrow.com. Of course, this was before before they canceled their uh, super cool free shipping, free next day shipping promo. Uh, you can still order these from them, but it's, I mean, you're gonna wanna place a minimum order of like 50 bucks, otherwise, you know, that's how much you're going to be spending on shipping alone. Um, but otherwise you can get capacitor kits from several different uh, hobby retailers. Um, I believe Esoteric Sean is going to be... I don't know if he's going to be selling, or Esoteric Mods. I don't know if he's going to be selling the cat capacitor kits or if he's going to be offering... It has a service, but I know he just stocked up on a bunch. All right, and these are, polarity matters with these, so you wanna make sure you get it right. Um, I, I'm just gonna cheat here and use another console. So the black line here goes towards the bottom. Solder that down. Again, hot air would actually be the way to do this because the pads are kind of under the capacitor. Oops, I got that crooked. There we go. These two. Get this All right, sorry about that. I wish my camera would give me like a little beep or something when it was when it decided it was done. Uh, but anyway, or even better if it just didn't overheat. But we'll move on. Okay, so these next two capacitors, both of them have the same polarity, really. So the they're well, they're both facing the same direction. So it should be easy to tell which one goes where. I'm also thinking it might be helpful if I turned up the heat on my iron here. On the one in my left hand.
Exactly that. Okay. Oh, fuck, that's hot. Okay. Um, I'm guessing by the shit stains on the motherboard that aren't from the flux. That's the specific capacitor that went bad. Let me uh, bring this up here. You can see right here there's some staining and right here there's some staining that's not from the flux i don't know if it'll clean up though doesn't really matter okay should be fine i hope it's fine Someone correct me if I'm uh, if I'm wrong about that regarding you know if this if I need to clean this up. I'm guessing that could corrode over time. far more issues in the future okay whatever we'll move on so I already unboxed the other two capacitors this is the top one because that's the small one it's the bottom one I have a burn on my finger from touching that so that's cool so my recommendation is uh, well don't touch that shit well, it's still hot. Okay. Add some solder. Add some solder to these pads too. But really what they need is flux, not solder. Yeah. They keep getting these funky ass joints. There's no flux. That was entirely too much. Uh, but that looks so much better, doesn't it? One left. Oh wait. Need the soldering iron, not the tweezers. Okay. I'm going to flip that around. I can come at it from a funky angle. Based on the way this one's bubbling, I'm guessing this one was bad too. Okay. Learn my lesson.
Okay. Last one. Ah, oh, damn it. There we go. All right, now, assuming I broke nothing else, sorry, just clean up some errant flux. Last thing we need to do is put in a new speaker. I'm gonna use this donor board here that I've already stolen quite a few parts off of for other miscellaneous repairs. This one looks like it has a good speaker, so, ow. I think some solder splashed on me or something. And if all went as planned, not only should it still work, I should have sound. That's backwards. Volume's up. Moment of truth. Ah, ah. Tell the uh, volume wheel needs a little bit of cleaning. Seeing as how it gets louder or quieter if I'm just touching it, not even adjusting it. But that one's easy. You just hit it with a little bit of contact cleaner and uh, do this a bunch. And then when it dries, you should be good. Uh, but, well, there you go. That's how you, uh, if you need to, that's how you recap your Game Boy and as a bonus, how you fix that intermittent power or flickering power light issue. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.